Hi all, Magnus Carlsen played an incredibly instructive game in my opinion in round 5 against Levon Aronian and I think what it features is how to use semi-open files. Now semi-open files might not sound spectacular to you, it might not fill you with excitement the concept, but actually you should be excited. And the reason is, semi-open files can often favour you and not the opponent. Open files, by contrast, the subject to backfire. The opponent can also hijack your open files. But with careful use of a semi-open file, you can have one-way traffic, your resources hitting the opponent's resources. So you should be excited by semi-open files. I'll try and illustrate the concept with this game. So Magnus Carlsen playing white, kicked off with d4. Levon played this, the popular Rogozin setup with this bishop b4. So a hybrid system which has been gaining huge popularity recently, like a Queen's Gambit decline but with the pin. So the Limsa Indian pin with the Queen's Gambit decline. White now in live book plays the most popular, one of the most popular moves, which is to take care. And you might think, aren't you just unleashing the bishop? That's true. After e takes, you've liberated the bishop. On the other hand, white's pawns are generally on dark squares. The bishop, for example, we don't want to close in this bishop, by the way. But in principle, these pawns on dark squares are away from the light square bishop. There isn't too many uh, subjects of attack. On light squares. This bishop gets out of the pawn chain and now we see this kicking move h6 and usually now white takes on f6 which might seem a bit odd to give up the bishop pair another odd decision you might think but it makes sense because often well after bishop h4 black even has the resource g5 which is interesting uh, so that can lead to good counterplay for black so white just gives up the bishop pair quite often in this position. Bishop takes f6, Queen takes f6 and now Magnus played Queen a4 check. So that forces Knight c6 blocking the c pawn. e3 and let's do a semi open file assessment here and why it can be such a wonderful uh, advantage for you to accumulate and make use of if you can. Potentially white has this semi-open file against the pawn on c7. Black potentially has the semi-open file against e4. What that means is usually the outpost squares like e4 for black would be interesting, but with the knight not there, the outpost square is not that interesting. It's very difficult to use that outpost square in the foreseeable future. c5 might be interesting for white as an outpost square. Okay, so generally the semi-open file construction is apparent in the game now. Let's continue. So black castled, bishop e2, that means any bishop g4 is, is more than useless now. Bishop went to e6, rather passive, protecting d5 in advance though. Okay, so that means when the knight, uh, the now the knights can be unpinned without losing d5, but it's a bit of a passive bishop, so it didn't matter about the earlier cd. That bishop is not doing that much in this structure. White castled. And now a6, this bishop wants to retreat back to d6, but if it did so immediately, then knight b5 is useful to try and put pressure on c7 and d6. Black wants to keep the bishop pair. So this a6 taking away b5. Rook fc1, we see now that the use of the semi-open file is starting to be evident. By contrast, look at black's semi-open file. There's no peace pressure being built behind it. Often also, as well as the outpost squares to consider, you want to consider doubling rooks against the pawn which is subject to attack usually here. This pawn could be a good target. This one, this structure looks fairly solid at the moment if you look at this structure for e3. And anyway, that bishop's blocking the e file. So we see bishop d6. And now what seems to be a humble queen retreat, but pretty solid, keeping white really solid. The queen might be uh, uh, targeted on a4, but now here, very, very solid position in the center. White is ready for some operations on that c file. We see knight e7, as though black is interested in playing c6. a3, rook fd8. Now Levon is not using his semi-open file because there's not much uh, 
to see that it can be used. What if the rooks got doubled? There's nothing really to hit. It's a very, very solid structure here, and less so here. It seems white semi open file at the moment is more promising than blacks. And after b4, if black did play c6, he would be setting himself up for a classic minority attack, or white using the c5 square, or both getting a knight to c5 and the classic minority attack. So you can imagine a knight here is very nice. Uh, and this is something that black might want to avoid. But also, in principle, if this pawn was supported, then b5 to try and damage the pawn structure, isolate a pawn here and here, is an ideal, as well as getting a knight to c5. So you'd have weaknesses to attack. OK, so in the game, we don't see c6. So maybe Levon is pretty wary about not setting up a kind of default minority attack. He does something quite unusual, actually. It looks a bit strange. But he plays knight c8. This awkward knight retreat is aimed at this move knight a4. Believe it or not, knight a4. And now black again doesn't really want to play c6. If he plays c6, then knight c5, it's a juicy knight outpost. And the dark squares have already been weakened. If black ever took here, then the d4 square is quite quite nifty, but more importantly, perhaps his b takes to put pressure on b7. This will be unpleasant positionally for black, white building up later on b7. So what we see here is an interesting structural decision. Black plays b6, and the idea we're about to see now is if a5 being prepared. It's remarkable in its own right. Knight b2, the knight is heading now, for d3, where it can keep an eye on e5, knight e7. The knight can also head now for g6, where it can keep an eye on e5. And in fact, we have this tango here, knight d3, knight g6. The knights are dancing with each other against e5. So black is preserving control of e5. But what is the situation here with the minority attack situation? a4. So clearly, now, uh, c6 is even out of the question now. But black plays a5. And you might think, is this really, really clever stuff from Levon? He's actually created the structure which there's no minority attack. He's he's zeroed the minority attack. And if he took if if Magnus took here, then obviously a four is is not that great. You know, black can build up on a four. But by playing b five, which Magnus does, then there's no minority attack. Black has that potentially dangerous in theory, you'd think, dark square bishop. So is there any downside? And this is the very subtle thing about this structure. We talked about the semi-open files. The semi-open file for white is still very promising compared to black semi-open file. There's still nothing being built up on this semi-open file, yet white can build up on the C file. You want to accumulate advantages which don't backfire on you. That's why everyone should be excited sometimes about semi-open files when they can use them more effectively than the opponent. So here, what is going on? Rook e8, and now we see, we witness the celebration of white semi-open file with rook c3. We can start doubling rooks. And it looks OK at the surface solid. There is a downside. In the minority attack structure with a black pawn on c6, although it's subject to pawns getting uh, splintered, diced, black would have more protection on the d5 pawn. That is a particular downside in this position which I believe Magnus Carlsen is fully aware of, that because he controls, in fact, that c6 square, and it could be occupied in the future, d5 is weaker than usual. That's a key consideration, as well as the semi-open file here. So let's see that. Bishop f5, doubling on the semi-open file. And to most people, they wouldn't be excited about this game. But uh, look at black semi-open file. There's no, there's no tactics. There's no pressure. The dark squares have been kept under control. This is a very solid construction uh, for holding e5, f4, and not being hacked on the king side. Unless bl black can use pawns, you know, to try and create weaknesses, this is otherwise very solid. There doesn't seem to be any sacrifices available to black. So black's playing another move which doesn't particularly seem to do that much. And we see now white playing now knight d2. 
the rook is holding the knight which means this bishop is free to move it's not just protecting d3 now it can go to g4 it can also potentially go to f3 to look at d5 if the light square bishops can be swapped off then the c6 outpost on that same open file would be more valuable to white the rook would be less evictable so weakening black on the light squares would not only try and get an outpost on c6 but also later d5 would still be vulnerable so let's have a look rook d7 now another great uh, prophylaxis move from Magnus he actually plays the move g3 strengthening his dark squares even more and putting on the cards again still maintaining bishop f3 or bishop g4 if there were any tactical issues that they're, they're starting to be kind of ruled out for example sacrifices on h2 you could imagine uh, for example let, let's let's see a radical example bishop here it's not quite working but you can imagine any uh, at times bishop takes h2 and queen f2 on bishop d takes d3 just just to illustrate this here bishop takes bishop takes this sort of thing it doesn't it doesn't work uh, in this position of course but uh, any bishop takes h2 is kind of ruled out by Magnus's g3 knight f8 and now bishop g4 trying to weaken black on the light square so this outpost square has been made more significant knight h7 and now Magnus takes so he's weakened black on the light squares on the other hand this knight threatens to make use of white's light squares it seems in theory so Magnus is also cautious with Queen f3 if the Queens can come off then he can start attacking d5 again without fear of King's safety the Queen sidesteps that so black not interested in a Queen exchange h4 Queen e7 and it's only tactically at the moment that the d5 pawn is not simply dropping off in this position Queen takes there's uh, potentially Bishop takes g3 but even more useful is Bishop b4 hitting the rook uh, and even though this looks dangerous in theory actually uh, engines just white would be okay even in this position what would be okay there's, there's good compensation for the exchange but there's no rush to do this d5 is not going anywhere white's operations on the semi open file and black's avoidance of the minority attack structure has created the structure not only the outpost square is more significant but d5 is weaker and it's not going anywhere no rush to take it here Magnus instead makes use now of this semi open file and the lack of eviction possible by playing rook c6 nothing is in the position at the moment to evict the rook from c6 and it creates interesting lateral pressure which could be useful later as we'll see so knight f6 protecting the pawn is that a cause for regret no the pawn's not going anywhere and it's not supportable with c6 so already you can see look at this position and the semi open file use white semi open file has established a beautiful outpost on c6 lateral pressure d5 is also weaker downside there was no minority attack no isolated pawns but still there's pressure on d5 and now Magnus plays knight f4 does black want to give up the dark square bishop wouldn't c7 be weaker surely if bishop takes f4 this wasn't played then white just plays queen takes f4 and we have got a terrible pawn on c7 black's advantage in terms of the dark square bishop was also uh, to protect c7 and here this this would be quite unpleasant this position for black uh, if the, the counterplay can be got under control for example knight f3 if taking here then this is dangerous the lateral pressure can, can result in the king side collapse so black has to be very careful he can't just give up the dark square bishop so this knight is building up pressure on d5 and it seems this is starting to be a bad situation g6 now here you might think let's check knight takes d5 again in this particular position for knight takes d5 knight takes queen takes uh, here we've black has bishop takes but we've got queen here which is interesting and there's pressure on g6 and it's a little bit like the game but more significant in this position and white would still be okay there more significant is actually 
perhaps Bishop A3 just picking up an exchange again. Mengs doesn't have to get involved in these exchange sacks. So yeah, this is the second opportunity he could do an exchange sack, but why? Things are not going anywhere. That pawn is not going anywhere. He doesn't have to do an exchange sack with knight d5. He works on black's king side. He works to celebrate this lateral pressure afforded by the outpost on c6. He plays h5, undermining black's king, increasing his advantage. King g7, h takes, f takes. And it's in this position, it now becomes very interesting. This lateral pressure indicates actually g6 is more vulnerable. And the variation now with knight takes d5 works a treat here. This is much better than before. Knight takes d5 is played in this position. And let's have a look at the exchange sack winning line. Knight takes, queen takes. In the game, bishop a3 wasn't played. Bishop takes g3 was played. Let's have a look. If bishop a3 here, White has a fantastic resource actually in this particular position, which is not just about g6, but also the weakening of the king this way. I wonder if you can spot it if I give you five seconds to pause the video here. And it would absolutely celebrate that semi open c file. That's a clue. Queen takes d7 is, is winning for White. We just take care. And this is just totally over for black. This kind of position is absolutely fantastic. You see again, look, white's semi open file has resulted with fantastic lateral pressure and a winning position. Um, b6 is going, even if we try and defend that knight c4, it's, it's over for black. This is completely lost. So that has to be avoided. You can't play bishop a3 now. So bishop takes g3 was played. But Magnus has calculated this very well. Queen g2 celebrating the lateral pressure on g6. So the bishop has to defend now against that going back to stop g6 dropping off. But now knight c4. So threatening now either knight takes or knight e5. Both are quite strong actually. Rook f8. But uh, Magnus chooses the stronger of the two now. He plays knight e5, forking d7 and g6. Okay, so black is basically busted now at move 37. And what we've seen is, in in effect, one of the most high level demos of the use of a semi open C file that I think I've seen in recent months and from the world champion. This game is a classic model of the semi open C file and black not having similar advantages from the semi open E file. What does black do here? He's actually forced to play <laughs> bishop takes E5. It's it's a pretty horrible position. Um, what can, what can he do? The engine's actually giving other weird stuff to give up the exchange. Like g5 is the best move. In fact, that's how desperate the position is. If we took here, we just exchange up, still with our semi-open c file, and we're going to break black down later, just marching through the center with something like e4. Uh, so yeah, bishop takes e5, but this is pretty bad stuff. Now Magnus has a vicious attack, which stems from his earlier positional advantages. He takes on g6, he takes on h6. There's no queen h7 because queen takes f8, so king g8. He's careful not to blunder away the, everything with rook g6 because then there would be bishop g7. No, he now takes on e5, so he's got a massive attack. It's a winning attack. Queen takes e5, check, and now a beautiful move swinging the other rook in rook c4 to get to rook f4 that's actually one of the most accurate moves in the position it's the engine choice rook c4 the heavy military uh, troops are all coordinating against the king the rooks and the queen check rook h8 this doesn't really help matters the engine has a mate in 25 here but anyway this will do check check Rook takes e7, and now rook e4 check, and black resigns here. His king safety has been shot to pieces. Let's give some examples in this final position. If king d8, then here uh, there's a very clever move available for white, which wins instantly. 
I wonder if you can spot it. Very clever tactical move. I'll give you a clue, actually. The Queen is protecting the Rook. Is that a fact we can take away from the equation? So that's my clue to you. Five seconds to pause the video here. OK, Rook D4 check. So that blocks the protection of the Rook. And if Queen takes D4, then we just throw in Queen G5 check. And then we take the Queen next move. Thanks very much. So that final position is pretty helpless. That's an example with King D8. Um, King D7 is the same thing. Or is it? Yes. Rook D4 check. We can still do this with Queen C6 check. And then take the Queen. King F7. Here is just a mate in five with check. And we're getting a mate in five. That uh, mating that's been woven around the king. Okay, so it's a, it's a helpless final position as you're starting to see. Uh, I think I think that concludes it. Actually, we've seen all the various possibilities there. Okay, but uh, yes, this game strikes me as a model positional example of the use of semi-open files. So unlike open files, uh, semi-open files can be used in your favour without the opponent having um, the hijacking facilities that open files have. A direct question, how could Black have hijacked the C file to test that assertion? Very difficult. The structure favours white here. The semi-open file pressure favours white. The semi-open file pressure in theory favours black here, but he didn't make use of it. In other games, you'll see black establishing knight outposts on e4, building the rooks, making e3 more vulnerable, you know, undermining like f4, f takes. But here, black's e file action was non-existent. White's c file action was was slow and steady. He's building up pressure. An interesting positional concept from Black: avoid the minority attack. But it creates a subtle downside. This structure avoids the minority attack, but it means there's a c6 outpost. That means exchange off these bishops, and we can have an unevictable c6 outpost. That means we can get lateral pressure on that six rank later and also attack d5. It all came to fruition here. It's a beautiful game. It is absolutely stunning positionally. If you study this game and play it through again, look at what happened. It's absolutely beautiful stuff. Prophylaxis against any tactics from, from black. White's position is just rock solid on those dark squares, emphasizing that dark square bishop. Although white hasn't got a dark square bishop counterpart, there's going to be no tactics on the dark squares, no little cheapos. It also rules out things like uh, knight h4. If black was potentially threatening things like queen h4 or any use of h4, f4, all the dark squares, even though it seems to weaken the light squares, it's affordable in this position to play this. And now to get on with this campaign of weakening c6, which he did, all on the c file. The c file outpost c6 is very important here. Once we get it, D5 is weaker here. And now it's only tactics which put black on that narrow border of either losing the pawn or losing with sufficient compensation. It's only tactics stopping there. Because the pawn is, is basically away from the structure. It's like an isolated pawn. This D5 pawn is now like an isolated pawn in effect. And there's black cannot afford to give up the dark square bishop here. And so here we see now not only the sixth rank being weakened, but also actually it appeared that the seventh rank if black's king was on g7 and we lose that f pawn, we see black's seventh rank being subtly weakened, uh, which which create this stunning tactical concept with that seventh rank being weakened here. That knight takes d5 is the top engine move and Magnus's move. It's crushing because of the queen takes d7 tactic. This game is just poetry in this in this variation. Uh, with, with um, in this variation with bishop a3, this is just poetry that queen takes d7 is on for rook takes c7. So if black's forced to play bishop takes g3, this is going to backfire a little bit on black. Yeah, g6 is under scrutiny. Uh, what does black do here? He plays rook f8, and we see that knight e5. What to suggest for black? Queen d8? So white's got the rooks doubled on the semi open file. White's still got a big advantage here. Uh, 
which okay yeah maybe that's that's more stubborn resistance than the game in fact uh but it's still it's still very very pleasant for black uh, if we give a move if we give a move like this white can maybe consider taking here now on d6 and for example rook c8 and in this position this sort of tactic works here with that seventh rank so you see that this c file is a really major positional as asset in these variations but in the game yeah black just totally crumbles after this rook f8 knight e5 he has to you know unless he wants to give up the exchange he just goes into basically what is a winning attack either winning material or his king getting mated the game is poetry is absolute poetry so i think this is the final position that black resigned and i hope it's giving you an insight into when you accumulate advantages think about the advantages you can accumulate which don't backfire the long-term positional advantages which are often based on pawn structure because pawns don't go backwards but within that we're not always celebrating semi-open files do you celebrate semi-open files are you going to celebrate them more after this game i hope so i think it'll improve your game positionally comments or questions on youtube thanks very much